Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to redraw your art from description only. This is something my sister and I have done together, and I always think it's a lot of fun. I love doing this with my sister, but I thought it might be fun to try doing this with people I'm not related to. The tricky part about this is I needed a way for people to submit descriptions and also submit pictures, but not together because I need to be able to not see the picture and only see the description first. And since this is my first time doing this with artists outside my family, I thought the best option would be to do a test run with my patrons and YouTube members. On the Discord, I made a channel for submitting just the descriptions and another for submitting just the art. I do apologize that this was only available to my patrons and YouTube members this time around, but since I was kind of testing this idea out, I wanted to do it with a smaller group of people first. So the lovely members of the Discord server submitted descriptions of their art, and now I need to try to recreate the art based on the description only. But before we do, I want to thank Dragon City for sponsoring this video. Dragon City is a free-to-play mobile game available on all devices where you can build an empire with floating islands, farms, habitats, buildings, and the most awesome part, tons of dragons. Collect over 8,000 dragons with unique designs, elements, and rarities to build your own dragon empire. The art and animations of the dragons are all really neat and I love seeing all the different designs. Combine dragons of flame, nature, ice, electric, and many other elements to breed over 1,000 awesome dragons. Hatch your eggs and then feed your baby dragons to watch them evolve. I love seeing the baby dragons, they're so cute, and I also like seeing how they change when they evolve. You'll find more dragons of some of your favorite YouTubers like Mariah Elizabeth. It's so cute and I love it so much. Download Dragon City by clicking the link in the description or scan the QR code. And get a special free starter pack with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the rare Scout Dragon. Thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring this video. And now let's get into drawing. So I'll start by reading the description as the artist typed it out. That way you get an idea of what I'm working with. I will also re-bring up details as I get to them throughout the process. This description was submitted by Rebel Star Girl. The shot is a thigh up shot in three quarter view of a 16 year old girl, my OC Hana, with her head turned very slightly down. Oh, I messed up, oh no. I didn't notice that it said she was in three quarter view until now. Huh. Anyways, I'll keep reading. She is standing on the left side of the picture. Her arms are folded nicely in front of her and she is smiling slightly. Her hair is chin length and straight with bangs. She has a headband with a bow tied on the top of her head. She is wearing a long sleeved fitted shirt. She also has a shoulder bag on her left hip, viewers right. Her eyes are large and round with no pupil and one thick round eyelash. She is blind and part bat. She has large bat wings. Her left viewer's right one is stretched out and the right viewer's left is scrunched in. The background is a pastel pink textured gradient abstract background. Colors, hair, black, eyes, red brown, skin, olive, shirt, light blue, shoulder bag, brown, headband, green blue, wings, black. So yeah, I picked this one because I felt like I could pretty easily picture it in my head and I wanted to start with something not too tricky. However, it seems like I already messed up. <laughs> For some reason past me completely missed the detail of the character being in three quarter view and I drew her in front view instead. We are off to a great start it seems. <laughs> well, hopefully at least I'll get close with the rest of the picture. One detail I was a bit nervous about was the bat wings because I've never really drawn them before. Plus I kind of had a scarring experience of drawing wings several years back but we'll talk about that later. Bat wings are actually very interesting because they're kind of like big hands. We have the elbow joint, wrist, thumb, and then fingers with joints. I had to look up a lot of reference pictures and also some helpful breakdowns that other artists posted online. Now that my sketch is in place, we are on to the cleanup sketch. For the face and head, Rebel Star Girl said the head is slightly tilted downwards. Hana is slightly smiling. Her eyes are large and round with no pupil and one thick round eyelash. At first I thought one thick round eyelash was just describing the shape of the eyelash line itself. Thankfully I eventually figured out that she has an eyelash on the eyelash line that is very round. Or at least I hope that's correct. I add it in much later. For the hair it was described as chin length and straight with bangs. She has a headband with a bow tied on top of her head. So that's what I'm trying to draw. I decided to make the bangs be cut straight across. I hope this is correct. I wasn't sure if I should go with something more tapered and fluffy, but for some reason the more blunt cut felt like the right choice for the bangs. 
For the headband, I have the hair overlapping it along the sides just because I thought it would help things feel more natural, I guess. Plus, I never really like drawing headbands completely wrapping around the head for some reason. Oh, also, I noticed that pants were never described in the description. Only the fitted sweater is. Because of this, I made the sweater a kind of sweater dress. Hopefully this is correct because, uh, yeah. Clothing for the lower body was never described, and I'm assuming she's not going around with no clothes for her lower half. For the arms at first, I actually thought they were in this kind of pose, but then when I searched folded arm poses to use as a reference, everyone had their arms crossed, so I decided to cross the arms. I hope this is correct, it probably is, but I'll be kind of sad if it ends up being what I was thinking of. <laughs> also, random fact, I never like drawing crossed arms. I've done it a lot of times, but each time I do, I never really like it. I can never get the arm that overlaps in front and has the hand tucked to look normal. I often have to kind of cheat it and draw the hand not tucked. Uh, so yeah, I never like drawing arms in this pose. For the picture in this video, I'm keeping them a bit more casual. I'm going to keep them a bit more sketchy and I will render them, but not to the same level of polish as my usual illustrations. Mostly because this is for fun and to see how close I can get to the other person's art. This isn't really for me to make fully rendered or finished illustrations. I do get them looking pretty finished, it's just I know it's not the same level as my usual illustrations, but I get them to a point where I'm happy with them. I briefly mentioned that I had a scarring wing drawing experience and I wanted to elaborate on that more so you all aren't confused. Uh, so a handful of years back I made a wing drawing tutorial. In it, I showed how I would draw fairy wings, angel wings, and dragon wings. This video is now private because I got a good amount of negative feedback on that video. And I'm going to say the feedback was totally right. Younger me tried my best to research wings before making the tutorial, but I did not properly research or find enough information. So the wings I drew were not very accurate, especially the dragon wings. I thought that because dragons didn't exist, I could just kind of do whatever I wanted. And this is kind of true, but it's really good to look at stuff in real life and try to incorporate that into our fantasy designs. Uh, so yeah, after that video, I never really tried to draw dragon or bat wings like that again until now. And I feel like I did a lot better this time, thankfully. I do feel like I could have done a bit better with the wing that is kind of closed or curving around, uh, but it's progress and I'm decently happy with how they turned out. Now that the base colors are in place, I'm going to add the background. I didn't have a ton to go off of for the background. It was just described as a pink gradient with texture and that was kind of abstract. I decided to make the gradient have a slight texture and it's in a box because I like adding colored boxes for backgrounds. I don't know. <laughs> I have a feeling this might be a bit different, but it's okay. Now for shading. The skin was described as being an olive color. I'm assuming it's not an olive green, but it's kind of like my skin tone where it has a more yellowish hue to it. My brother Joshua has a very olive skin tone. I feel like I don't usually need to talk about my brother Joshua in my videos, but he keeps popping up in my voiceover for some reason. <laughs> uh, the sweater color is light blue, and like I mentioned, I made it a dress. I did decide to have the character wear black tights, I just thought it seemed cute, and like I said, I wasn't sure what to do for the lower body since it wasn't described. For the wings, they are black, but I decided to add hints of a reddish brown because I often notice that for bat wings, when the wings get thinner, they have a kind of reddish color to them. I'm assuming this is from light kind of going through the wings so we can see the color of the blood and stuff shining through. I was happy with how fast I was able to get this picture done, I was able to finish it in about 2 hours. I always forget how much time I save if I skip doing line art and ease up on the coloring a bit. That being said, I am glad this one didn't take too long because the next picture took me much longer. Like I said, I picked this description because I felt like I could really easily picture the character and the pose. I am sad that I accidentally drew everything in front view instead of three quarter view. I still haven't seen what the actual picture looks like. I've been waiting because I want to record my live reaction, and I have to say waiting multiple days to see if I got close or not has been kind of torturous. <laughs> I've really wanted to see the original picture. I always love comparing how close or different things are. Sometimes I think I'm really close and then things end up being totally different. But now we can see how close I am. So let's take a look. Oh wow, okay, it's kind of close but not at the same time. I should have gone more olive with the skin tone. And of course the character is turned in three quarter view and mine is in front view. And oh wait, the arms are folded the way I thought they were. 
Oh, that's so annoying. That's the pose I thought the arms were in, but then when I googled folded arm pose, everyone had their arms crossed, so I switched the arms to being crossed. Oh, I would have been so close if I had gone with my gut. Also, I didn't get the eye color quite right. I made my eyes more red than brown, but these are kind of more brown than red. Uh, but I was pretty close with the sweater. It is like a sweater dress and she's wearing black tights and that's what I did for mine. So I got kind of close there, so that's cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if this is a success or not. Like it's kind of close, but it's also pretty different at the same time. Uh, but thank you so much Rebel Star Girl for submitting your character and your description. Your character is super cute and I had a lot of fun trying to redraw your description in my style. Also, Rebel Star Girl has a YouTube channel that she posts art videos on. I'll leave a link to it down in the description if you want to check it out. This next description was submitted by Cosmic Dragon. The description is very detailed and long. For now, I'll tell you all of the info related to the composition and character's pose. There is a girl high schooler sitting at her desk back towards us, resting her head on her hand looking out the window. Since she's leaning against her hand, that is flat palm against the side of her face, her body is leaned over the desk and her elbow is propping her up on the desk. You see the desk she is sitting in fully and a partial desk in front of her. Her left leg is back under the chair, toes on the ground. Her right leg is stretched out in front of her into the right corner of the desk leg and is pressed against it. Heel on the bottom part of the desk and toes pushed up against the leg. The window is right behind her from our view. Uh, this sentence right here really confused me, uh, but I took it as the windows were to the side of her and not behind her. Uh, anyways, back to reading. The desk in front of her, we can see the corner of their window. It's a double pane window. The frame is a marble-like material. It looks into another set of windows. Hers look into the hallway, which then looks through the hallway's windows outside. There are sakura trees in bloom and a faded blue mountain skyline. The sky is also a gray blue. Also, there are two windows visible in the hallway. The right one has one tree and the left has two. Uh, so like I said, this isn't all the information. This is just the info related to the composition and the pose. Uh, but I was greatly confused by all of this <laughs> and it's kind of the reason I picked this description. I felt like I couldn't really picture this one at all. The thing that confused me the most is that the window she is looking out of looks into another set of windows and that these other set of windows are in the hallway. This confused me because I was picturing the character looking out exterior windows and I couldn't figure out how we, I would position the camera. So we are behind the character and they're looking out exterior windows but we can also see the windows in the hallway looking outside. But then I was like, oh wait, sometimes classrooms have windows that look out into a hallway and maybe she's looking out of those. And this took my brain, I'm not even kidding, like 30 or 40 minutes to figure out. <laughs> uh, but once I did, everything kind of started to make more sense. Also, I tried to draw a view that I felt could best look through the window, but Cosmic Dragon does mention her right hand is lightly gripping the desk's right corner. We only see the hand, no wrist or arm. And I didn't notice this sentence until later. Uh, with the perspective I drew, we can't really see the corner of the desk. So I kind of just drew the right arm in kind of in front of her. I guess it could kind of be grabbing the corner of the desk. Uh, like I said, all this info was quite confusing to me and I was trying my best to make it all work. Uh, but now that I have my rough sketch, I brought in a random 3D model. I'm doing this so I can make some perspective rulers and grid that match the perspective I'm working with. I got a basic idea of what I want for the perspective with my sketch, but now I want something a bit more concrete so that everything lines up and doesn't get too wonky. Like if you watch the footage, you'll notice I'm drawing boxes on the ground to make sure that things like the table and chair legs all line up with each other. In my rough sketch, the chair legs were pretty off and didn't line up very well. <laughs> so by drawing a box on the ground, I can better get an idea of how they should line up. Another reason I chose this description is because it kind of focused on the background more than the character. Being that I really like to draw characters, a lot of my illustrations focus on them instead of the background. And so more detailed backgrounds are something I tend to shy away from. I do often like natural backgrounds, but when it comes to ones like this that have more industrial stuff and you have to be more careful with the perspective and different things. Plus my visual memory for furniture is pretty low. Uh, so when you combine all this together, I kind of don't like drawing indoor backgrounds. And I do want to say I was using references for the furniture. I wasn't doing this straight from my brain. But for the window, I did kind of wing it. The description described them as double paned and this didn't help me a ton because double paned windows come in a lot of styles. 
So I kind of just did what I felt like made sense and kind of matched the description. Like we can see the corner of another window by the other desk uh, that was mentioned. Uh, here is more of the description for the character. She is blonde and has short shoulder length straight hair. The top of her hair is pulled into a ponytail on each side, but we only see one being squished against her head since her other side is not visible. Her hair is very shiny and her pigtails are up with a fuzzy scrunchie that is a bright blue. A lighter shade of blue but not light like sky blue. And is rimmed in pink so the edge fuzzies look almost purple. Her fingernails are painted a dark sapphire blue and are french tipped with the same blue as her scrunchie. She's wearing a black blazer that because of her position is pulled up slightly showing about an inch of her back. Her skirt is checkered pink, black, and a grayish. Some rests on her thigh facing us and some falls through the back of the chair a tad. Her left leg is back under the chair, toes on the ground, wearing a dark blue sneaker just like her nails, with black laces, a white toe part, and purple for the tongue, and the bottom that we see. Her right leg is stretched out in front of her into the right corner of the desk leg and is pressed against it, heel on the bottom part of the desk and toes pushed against the leg, wearing a pink sneaker, black laces, a white toe part, and purple tongue. Her ankle and shoe on that side are all we can see because of the angle. The floor is a simple gray tile, the walls are a lighter brown, and the trim is a creamy lighter brown. Uh, so yeah, that's some more information about the picture. One thing I did know how to do is make only one pigtail be visible, so I drew them both. No matter how I envisioned turning the head, I just couldn't figure out how to make it so I could only see one pigtail. It'll probably make sense once I actually look at the picture. Also, I didn't make her lower back visible. I just couldn't think of how the blazer would be folding to make her back be visible for one inch. I did eventually figure out the skirt. That took some thinking on my part. At first, I kept trying to tuck the skirt, but then I was like, well, for it to be going out of the chair, she must have sat without tucking the skirt. So I tried my best to have it flow in a way that makes sense with the chair. I do apologize if I forget to include any of the description. I'll put both of the descriptions for both our pieces in the description box below. Like I said, Cosmic Dragons is very long, which I did appreciate. I did ask for a lot of detail and you did provide a lot of detail, so thank you. Uh, but I am trying to bring up all of the relevant sections again, so I do apologize if I do miss some parts in the voiceover. Also, as I'm rereading over it, I noticed I missed some things in my picture. Like the middle tree having a knot in it and uh, we can only see the thumb and pointer finger on the right hand. Both the one I drew, you can kind of only see the thumb. So yeah, I do apologize that I missed some things from the description. I do try to read through them very carefully. It's just for some reason, some details just don't pop up when I'm reading them or I kind of forget them and then they don't make it into the picture. That is something that does make this tricky. When I do this with Reagan, she's my sister, and I kind of know how she thinks and what she means when she's describing something for the most part. However, doing this with people I don't know is much more confusing because I don't know how they think or how they describe things. I don't know them like I know my sister, but that's kind of why I wanted to try doing this with artists I don't know in real life. It's a fun challenge for sure. Now all the base colors are in place so I can start shading. I'm starting by creating the cast shadows of the objects and ridges. I make all of these shadows with a muted purple set to multiply. I found it's very important to add cast shadows to ridges like on the windows to help give them depth and make them feel like they're overlapping or going out further in certain areas. Next was making the window look like glass. I added some shiny streaks to the outside windows. Then I filled in the inside windows with white and lowered the opacity. I thought it would be neat to have some kind of reflection be in the window, so I took a background from Clip Studio Paint, clipped it to the window, and then played around with it until it kind of looked like a reflection sort of thing. I didn't care if it wasn't super accurate since we can hardly see it. It's just a fun little touch uh, if you look more closely. Next I fleshed out the trees a bit more. Cosmic Dragon described them as Sakura trees, so I made their foliage be pink. At first I painted these with no line art, but they did feel a bit out of place, so I added some line art to them later on. They felt a little bit too painty and like they were a painting in the hallway. <laughs> For the character's coloring, it was going pretty smoothly, wasn't anything outside of the norm. However, the skirt did confuse me a bit. It was described as a black, gray, and pink checker pattern, but I couldn't think of a way to make the skirt be checkered with three colors. 
I don't know, the pattern just kept seeming weird in my head. So I thought maybe it was a kind of plaid instead. Because the skirt was draping and flowing so much, I had to draw the plaid in myself. And I never really liked drawing in patterns by hand. I often use pre-made ones. Uh, but this was actually kind of fun. I was trying my best to make the pattern make sense and flow in the right way. Hopefully it looks okay. I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Instead of thinking about how the lines flow from the top to the bottom, I try to think more about how they flow from the bottom to the top. Since the bottom of the skirt is kind of turning and stuff, and we can see more of the bottom than the top of the skirt. I'm not sure if this is making sense at all. It makes sense in my head, uh, and I, I hope it's making sense to you. <laughs> I know that my picture won't be a perfect match since I did miss some things from the description and I also couldn't totally figure out how to make things work, but I do hope I'm decently close. Even if I'm not, I did really like working on this picture and I do say that, but it was kind of tricky at times. <laughs> it definitely made me think. However, I am proud of myself for drawing a background without 3D models. In my webcomic, I'm always using 3D models for furniture because I hate drawing it, but it is satisfying to know I drew this furniture myself but I am still going to use 3D models in my webcomic. <laughs> this was way too time consuming. It took a really long time. My panels with furnitures would take like three times as long if I always had to draw the furniture, especially for large classroom scenes. 3D models are so nice. It was also fun adding shading to the objects. In my webcomic, the shading is very simple, so I often don't really have to shade things like furniture. But it was neat trying to capture the different materials and think about the forms and how they would cast shadows on each other. Overall, I feel like I learned a lot by working on this picture. But now it's time for the moment of truth. How close is my picture to the original? Oh wow, I did get pretty close. The perspective for mine is very different. I took a very different view. Instead of being kind of from the side like yours is, mine is more from the back. And that explains your description a lot of how we're able to only see one pigtail and also able to see the other hand. That makes a lot of sense. It all makes sense now that I see yours. <laughs> uh, but I do feel like mine ended up decently close. And I now see what you mean about the pattern for the skirt. My skirt ended up being really different and I felt like I chose overall kind of more pastel-y colors. Overall, I got a lot closer than what I was expecting. Thank you so much, Cosmic Dragon, for taking the time to submit your description and your picture. It was really neat trying to redraw it in my style. Cosmic Dragon also has a YouTube channel where she posts animation videos and art videos. And if you want to check it out, I'll put a link to it in the description. I want to say thank you to all the YouTube members and Patreon patrons that submitted your art and the descriptions. I would totally do them all if I could. Sadly, I could only get two done in this video. I definitely want to do this again sometime and maybe in the future I'll open it up to the public. Uh, let me know if you want me to do this again. Also, don't forget to check out Dragon City and claim your free starter pack by clicking the links in the description or scanning this QR code. Anyways, that is all for this video. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!